Welcome back, this is Martin and you're watching Astro from Home. Today a short run through session plus Meridian Flip. Let's get to the action right after the intro. So, welcome back. Here, the well-known loading screen. This is all real-time and I'm directly going into connecting all my gear. I've been using the Yumi 17, an on-step mount, confirming park and home position, start the tracking, check a few more settings here. If everything's properly selected and now the camera, my Poseidon M from player one, monochrome camera, APS-C size, checking all the information, connecting my TubeTech 462M guide camera and now the player one filter wheel as well as the ZWO EAF to be ready for all the session and um, yeah, connecting went flawless as usual adjusting some exposure time for the go-to and um, to start my session I usually go into the star library choose a target that is in a very good position for me to also be able to to do the autofocus and calibrate the guiding and if you like my content, please consider a like for this video and subscribe to my channel. It really helps me out to gain some more reach. And here, what I'm doing, the, the plate solver is still running for the target. So here we see what... Uh, where the telescope has been pointing to. I've been moving slightly once more by accident, took another image to plate solve it to determine the right focal length. So if I've entered it correct and in sync to the mount where it's currently looking at and here set the plate solve. Accidentally I only pressed sync and sync or sync and center and did not uh, do the apply button first so <laughs> finger has been a bit too quick so the mount is now now uh, slewing to to the target again doing its plate solve and I will have to enter the focal length by myself because I, I said I forgot to press the button to automatically apply it. So and now I'm first doing an autofocus. I've been speeding up everything a bit as it usually takes one two minutes and I didn't want to waste the time here for the video. Now doing the polar alignment. It, uh, as you know, it's the three-point polar alignment like many other applications also have. And the first image has been taken, it has been plate solved, and now the mount is slewing to the second position. So, and now it's stabilizing to ensure good image quality for the second image, which has already been done now. It's plate solving again, the second image. And now the mount is moving to the third position in order to calculate the polar alignment offset. And as you see, this really works flawless. Stabilizing again and now taking the third image plate solving third image and here we are 
So I'm seven minutes off in altitude and nine minutes in azimuth. And since a couple of updates, there is also this auto refresh for the plate solve. And as I'm a bit fighting all the time with my Yumi 17, the plate solve usually takes a bit of time for me, especially on the altitude. But here you see it went quite well. Now I'm taking another image to see if if my focus is still good and and if there are no obstructions in the in the uh, field of view of the telescope and I'm usually doing this quite often to double check just to be sure that I didn't forget anything and we can see the camera is already cooled down to minus 10 degrees. Now going to the star library again and looking for the first target for the night. And I, I'm doing a go-to uh, for this target once more as, um, as I also want to double check that I have clear view on on NGC 2361. So, and here, uh, as I was recording, <laughs> I was three times pressing the wrong button. Again, the search button, not the the telescope item icon um, to make the mount move. And um, I do this this check. Uh, about the view on on Thor's helmet once more because it's very low for me and also I can only see it in a time frame of round about two hours and um, yeah there I need to be sure that I can see the the object um, prior to starting my session so everything's Good here. The plan I've already been creating, because in in the current time of the year I don't see any targets for very long time, uh, especially those targets which I always wanted to do, like like Thor's helmet and so on. And there I had to do some calculations of the time and how many frames. I can make for each of the targets before I have to move on. And therefore I already created the plan, but you could see that um, the filters are properly highlighted as well, at least on the right hand side when you clicked on the task. And now I testing calibration. If, if my guide camera is working well, Fortunately, my Player One OAG has a little light leak, and therefore the the frame is not even on the guide camera. And now I already started the plan that that I can start my session. And as you can see, centering of of the first target, so Thor's helmet is already happening here. Sure, it takes its time for those tiny corrections and as no plate solve has happened yet in in the Sky Atlas, um, my telescope um, appears to be in the wrong position still. But um, from the image before, I, I knew that I'm at the right position by starting the plan and with my setting to run autofocus in the beginning, Stellar Beta is doing so to run the autofocus this time as it's fr uh, already happened before. Um, we don't see this nice graph with the HFR, but at the bottom we get this displayed and 
it's again a bit sped up that that it doesn't take too much time on the video so it's still running the autofocus i switched over to the calibration because uh, to the guide camera as the calibration started and here i had a small problem <laughs> the calibration just had two steps so you could see um first step was 14 pixels away the second then 29 and so um the calibration data was not too good i reported this to TubeTech already that they finally make the calibration step size editable for the user as at the moment it is sufficient for something like 400 to 500 millimeters of focal length but not for longer focal lengths and if you have a small guide scope with maybe 120 millimeters it takes ages as it's going something like 30 or 40 steps until it reverses direction and because of the poor calibration that I had the, the guiding numbers are also not ideal uh, and as, as I also had it enabled to, uh, enable to run autofocus after filter change because we don't have the filter offsets yet um, Stellar Vita changed from luminance to H-alpha filter and then of course it runs through another autofocus run and yeah, in the meantime I'm looking a, bi uh, a bit at the guide graph if anything happens or if guiding is turned off I'm um, switching over to to the guide camera and yes it's guiding but you will see that it's very poor guiding because of the low amount of calibration steps that Stella Vita took and here you see um, the system is so PHD2 is trying to send through a couple of of corrections to the mount to keep it well centered on on the target so checking again and Stella Vita sh is already imaging here um, on the on Thor's helmet and yeah I'm doing what uh, people are doing in the meantime waiting for the image and I cut out the waiting time a bit um, uh, to show you that the image was taken you could uh, briefly see Thor's helmet in the preview and I'm regularly checking the guiding that is not so good and here we are waiting now for Meridian Flip as first 30 minutes are on the one side of pier and then it flips over and the meridian flip i've filmed with my mobile phone as i could in that case show my mount my mount and also film on on the tablet what stella vita is doing and here we see um it's working flawless to to slew over uh, to the other side of the pier sure it takes a bit of time as my yumi mount on only has a slew speed of three uh, arc, arc minutes per uh, no uh, three degrees per second this is pretty slow <laughs> as you know and i'm used to other speed um with my SEM40 and here we see that that um, yeah, it's now plate solving again on the other side of the pier the the larger video screen is not 100% fitting as I was adjusting a bit the guide parameters um, to, to have it 
running more or less properly. You see I have a total RMS of 1.7 here because of that poor calibration. But at the end of the night I could see that um, about 30% of the frames were usable. I also made use of the frames because I I could use them and for for a target that I can only see for something like two hours per night every frame counts that that you can image and store and so so I made use of of the images to uh, to finally get ready with uh, Thor's helmet and um, in the small screen you see that that it's um, right on target again and um, starting to to guide and overall I have to admit it was a successful night even with those little downsides with like the guiding but let me show you what I got over a couple of nights and here we go to all of you see you soon and clear skies